Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the first film of 2023, which is the January PG-13 horror film of the year called Megan. So you might be asking, how could this possibly go wrong? It's a PG-13 January horror film. It's definitely going to be just absolute trash, especially based on that trailer that I did not like at all. I thought it looked ridiculously campy and goofy and looked like it would be a so bad it's good type of film. But really, you should be asking, how did this go so right? Because this film is genuinely good. There's a lot of great character-based thematic resonant storylines within this film that is completely shocking to me. And so we are going to be getting to spoilers for this film because there's a lot that I want to talk about in here. So if you have not seen the film yet, go check it out, come back, watch this review, or watch this review anyways. I don't really care. So let's talk about the good things about this film first. And I'll say the first thing is the relationship between Gemma and Katie. And I think that this movie takes a very mature approach on this sort of relationship where you have this little girl who just, just lost her parents and you have this woman who's very much not prepared to be a parent. And how are you going to focus on that relationship and how is that going to kind of feed into the decision decisions that these characters make and the mistakes that they make along the way and how it kind of really does teach this little girl how to be more violent and how to push away her emotions rather than embracing it and trying to learn and grow from it. And so I think that this movie is very mature in terms of how it handles those themes of parenting, especially in the age of iPads, where a parent can just throw an iPad at their child, not literally throw an iPad at their child, but you know, give their child an iPad and just kind of be disassociated from that kid and have that relationship and have that bond between a mother and a daughter not be fully formed and to have that, you know, that relationship and that reliance on this technology be the thing that kind of helps them grow. And I think that can be a very dangerous thing, especially when it comes to AI because of things that are actually happening in our real world. And so we all know that our technology listens to us in our everyday lives. If I start talking about Wendy's in this review, I bet Twitter is going to start advertising Wendy's to me as soon as I'm done recording this thing. And so that implication of how it's always listening and always adapting to everything that you say in our real lives is terrifying and the implications of that when it comes to social media sites is even more terrifying because if you're if you're on like Twitter say and you you click on you engage on a tweet that's either slightly left-leaning or slightly right-leaning what is that social media site going to do it's going to engage with you and give you more content that goes on either one of those directions but the, the type of content that is exploding on these social media platforms are the more extremist views and so it's going to start advertising those extreme views to you on either side and that can be very dangerous because of how influential it could be on kids. Say like with TikTok and Andrew Tate being advertised towards young boys, that is a very dangerous and very scary mentality that is being spread to all these very impressionable children. And that's what this film is about because this little girl is so reliant on Megan and Megan has this mentality that we need to protect this little girl as as strongly as possible. Nothing can possibly harm her emotionally, physically, or anything like that. And so to be able to do that, we need to get rid of all these other outside elements that can possibly harm her, whether it is emotionally, physically, or mentally, or just any of those sort of things. So what does Megan do? She's going to get rid of those in a, in a violent way, therefore teaching this little girl that violence is the answer. Because the point this little girl slaps Alison Williams' character, and it's a very, very dark moment for this kid. You can see her going down this path that is very hard to get back because that again that impressionability of children if you go down a certain path and you don't fix it early on it's just going to stick and it's going to be very dangerous with them and their development because they are so impressionable and so that's what this film really does dive into with that technology and with that ai and how terrifying that really is and that is scary and so when you see megan in the background of certain shots just always listening just kind of analyzing the situations seeing these different things especially when it comes to the dog and the neighbor and how you can see megan's wheels inside her head slowly turning and trying to figure out how she can possibly help this little girl in her mission to protect her and how that leads to a dark place because of the glitches in her system because of that coding to protect this little girl rather than try to teach her how to grow and live with these sort of things that is the scary part of this film. When it comes to her actually going around and killing things and attacking people, I found it to be kind of goofy and just it didn't always work for me. I think some scenes have a lot of great tension. I think the very ending when Megan shows up and she's talking to Allison Williams' character and saying that I don't want to kill you because I will damage Katie's, you know, perception of the world. It'll be another tragic loss for this character and she can't do that. And so Megan has to try to manipulate her in a way to try to work together for the sake of Katie, even if that means to stick a pen inside of her brain to a point where she's paralyzed and she can't actually physically do stuff. She'll still physically be alive and be there for the child, but Megan would be the primary caregiver because of that. And that is a terrifying implication because you see Megan manipulating situations the way that she was manipulating Katie throughout this entire film. And so that is 
those are the more terrifying implications, that tension that you build throughout that scene where they're, where they're having that conversation and she's she's pinning her down and forcing her to say that everything is fine to not come out of her room. That was very, very great suspense and, and very great tension like the forest scene when Megan is kind of stalking that little kid that was bullying Katie throughout the movie. You get to see these very intense scenes that build up to these intense moments that even though these moments can be kind of goofy and because this movie isn't rated R, it kind of pulls its punches just a little bit and then it has those goofy elements of her dancing and stuff like that, which I do think is very fun, especially her dancing. I actually really love that scene, but it doesn't always work as well as that scene. I think that balance of the goofy campy tone of these, you know, this little killer doll of murdering people doesn't always mix with the very mature handling of how it deals with AI and how it deals with parenting and how it deals with the impressionability of children. And so I think that the tone and the mix of it is almost perfect. I think that it does a lot of great things in this film, but again, I think when this movie is being the killer doll movie, when it's attacking and killing people, it's not nearly as interesting as the suspense and that tension that is built with the more manipulative side of Megan, which I think was really, really well written. And so when it comes to Allison Williams' character, I actually really liked how flawed her character was, how the decision she made was almost always the wrong decision, but you understand why she was making those decisions, because she was handed an impossible task. She was given this child that she never wanted, that she never should have to take care of because of this tragic event and settles her with a decision that's impossible to make of how do I lead this girl into a, a life that's the best for her given the circumstances or how can she possibly accidentally ruin her life by leading all this trauma and building it into a wrong direction. So the stakes for these characters are actually very high on a personal level. It's so when this character does develop this AI because you know she's more career driven, she's not a mother, she doesn't know these things that could possibly be harmful even though there's some characters around her that's trying to guide her in the right direction saying that it is dangerous. She doesn't know how to do that. She's only doing what she's good at and that is the tech side of things she doesn't know how to be a mother she's developing this tech stuff she's a genius in that way she developed this ai that is so smart that is so advanced that she can barely comprehend it herself but she's not a good mother and so she's making this thing make decisions that are not good for a child and so there's that conflict within her and that growth that she makes from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie where she has that conversation with katie that i think is a very sweet scene and she leaves and she completely abandons her job despite how dangerous she knows that megan can be and how things can possibly go wrong without her being there but she knew that she needed to be with this little girl more that was more important to her so I thought her arc was very strong in those decisions even though they were incredibly stupid I understand because what else was she going to do with the things that she knows how to do? That's just her character. I also really enjoyed Ronnie Chang as her boss. He was so perfect for this kind of leader of this tech company that's, you know, the, the, the satire and the comedy that you get out of that character. I thought he played it really well. I think her co-workers at work, how they try to guide her in the right direction was pretty solid. And I love the fact that Megan that scene where, you know, she was strung up and they're trying to deactivate her and they're going through the system and seeing that Megan was blocking them out of everything to try to shut her down and how terrifying that was of him going back and unplugging her from the system and how she kind of wraps the rope around him and starts hanging him. That was a great suspenseful sequence. I actually really did like that. And when it comes to Megan herself, I think that the blend between the CG, this actual uh, reference performance from this little girl and just all the elements that came together to create Megan was actually really effective. I think she looked great. So I think she just had that perfect amount of uncanniness to be terrifying in a certain way and when she had her skin off she reminded me a lot of a FNAF character which if the creators of this film are working on the FNAF movie I'm pretty sure they're not unfortunately I know it's still Blumhouse is doing the FNAF movie but if these people were to make a FNAF movie I would actually be so on board with it especially with this film as a reference to that and so maybe there is a good thing about you know Blumhouse having access to the Five Nights at Freddy stuff Hopefully they do a good job with that because if this is any indication of the direction that Blumhouse and James Wan are going with their new kind of deal of how they're kind of merging their companies together, I absolutely love the direction that horror is going because between this, between Smile, and between Barbarian, these are all films that if they were handled in a less careful way, these films could all be just absolutely terrible. But because it has a good effort into building these characters and building this strong kind of thematically resonance themes behind these films that do really resonate with audiences, I think that's the direction that horror is going that gets me very excited as both an audience of horror movies and also a, a want her to be a, a filmmaker of horror films. So it just, it's a very exciting time for horror. And I think this film 
being the first film in January of a horror film could have been so bad, but it actually was pretty damn good. So have you guys seen Megan? What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts on this film. I think it's a very fun time at the theater. It's not my favorite horror film of all time, but of course I was very happy that I did see it. And I'm curious to see if they do make a sequel, how they would write around the ending of this film. You know that Megan kind of downloaded her AI into the little assistant that was already living at Allison Williams' home. And so there's open to be a sequel, but in terms of this being a standalone thing, I thought it was a lot of fun. So thanks everybody for watching this review. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to have so many more reviews for the rest of this year. So definitely subscribe to keep in touch with all the things that I'm going to be talking about on this channel. I'm very excited to keep on making videos for all of 2023. So thanks everybody for watching and I hope to see you all in my next one.